All right, and welcome back to another session of Pelotech 101. Today I have a Winslow PS40 right here, and I want to go over some uh, some stuff with the convection blower or our distribution fan right here. Show you how that is uh, is removed, how we're able to pull that out. Uh, important that we're pulling that out on a regular basis so we can clean the fins on the inside of that fan paddle. Make sure that we're getting maximum RPM or maximum velocity CFM with the actual room air that's coming out. And uh, again, over the season, it'll collect dust and hair and some different things inside those fan blades. So I'm just going to go through a basic tutorial here on how we remove that fan, how we put it back in, and just kind of best practices or best tips as we clean those, uh, those fins that are inside of there. Most stoves are going to be very similar uh, to this as far as this snail style convection blower like this. Um, some may have different mounts, uh, but very, very similar in style to a lot of the different stoves that are in the marketplace. So with the, uh, with the PS40 Winslow, we basically have two Allen screws right out here. We have a 532nd Allen screw, and we are just going to loosen those up. At this point, there's no need to pull them all the way out. And one of the nice things about the Winslow is that uh, the majority of the bolts that secure the componentry in this all use the same size Allen wrench. So that's kind of a nice, uh, a nice little feature with that. But again, we're just loosening these up. As I've mentioned before in past videos, anytime that we're working back here with any of the electrical componentry, I always want to make sure that it is unplugged from the wall. Again, as you see here, I have both the side panels and the rear panel removed here. Grab that Allen wrench. And that just gives a little bit greater access back here. Again, uh, giving yourself more room back here can be ideal. Makes things a lot simpler. And, and obviously having good light makes a big difference as well. Yeah, we're just loosening that up. And it will slide off. Now, a lot of times when we remove a convection blower like this, we're going to see our gasket right here. This one is... Uh, Obviously quite war and torn and just split in half right there. But a lot of times when we remove, you know, we do have uh, we do have an issue with that gasket. Now a lot of the new gaskets are more of like a silicone based gasket, which don't have to be replaced every single time when they are removed. But a lot of these paper lyotherm style gaskets do. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pull these bolts all the way out so that as we put a new gasket on there, we can kind of thread that right in. And now with this particular blower here, electrical wise, we have one wire that is running to this low limit switch. So in this particular model, there's a low limit switch that is basically going to turn this blower on once the unit reaches, this particular one is 140 degrees. So 140 degree limit switch, that limit switch will lock close and allow the blower to turn on. So it's a blower low limit switch. So we're just going to wiggle our one connection off of there. And we have one connection here, which what we'll do is we will cut that little zip tie. And then obviously make sure that we re-zip tie that. We'll cut that little zip tie. And that'll expose the other wire that we have right here. And that is going right onto the block. I am paying close attention to which spade or which prong on that block. This one is a vertical block, three over. So I am paying attention to that. And I'm also paying attention on this particular blower to the color spades, right? So the pink spade right here was the one that went to the low limit, whereas the red spade right here is the one that went to the circuit block. So at this point, again, I am able to access kind of the inside of the blower wheel. And again, over time, this is gonna get caked up with hair and dust and dirt and all sorts of things. Most of these blowers are going to be uh, sealed blowers. A lot of them on the label right here, you're gonna be able to check to, to see if they require lubrication. And this particular one actually says oil with SAE 20. So this particular one is one that we would oil on an annual basis. So with the motors that have oiling ports, you're generally going to see those right above and below the label. And again, one thing I can uh, point out about these, uh, these sleeve bearing or sleeve bushing style blowers is it's important that we don't over oil it. Uh, so uh, a good thing to use is like a sewing machine oil, a high quality oil like that. And uh, essentially once a season, we're just putting a little drop up top and a little drop below in those two cavities. 
Uh, some units will have uh, an open spindle right here where you'll actually put a little drop of oil once a year. Other blowers you'll notice on here where they will say sealed, where there is no oil or lubricating required on here. So make sure that you check the label that's on the motor to know whether yours needs to be, uh, needs to be maintained as far as oil being added into those bushings on an annual basis. As you can see also in the windings of the motor right here, some dust can collect. To be perfectly honest, one of the best tools that you can use right here is compressed air, whether it be a can of the, like the air duster or if you have a small compressor uh, where you're actually able to blow the dust right out of the windings in the, in the bushing area right there. And then the same thing on this side. If I don't have uh, compressed air at all, generally what I'll use to clean these fins right here is like a dry paintbrush. So I'll have a vacuum cleaner hose handy and I will use a dry paintbrush to brush as much of that off of the fins as possible and where it is going to fall out in our general cavity or our general opening right here of that blower. But again, the cleaner that these fan blades are, the better that this thing is gonna spin, the longer that it's gonna stay in balance, the more room air that is going to come out uh, out of the front of the stove. So on an efficiency basis, again, just important that we're at least checking this uh, blower once a season and making sure that we're doing our routine maintenance. At this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this installed back in. So I'm gonna grab a, uh, a replacement gasket right here. I'm just gonna line that up and I'm going to thread that in. This particular one does not have pre-drilled holes. So we're just gonna kind of poke those through as we initially get this threaded in here. crud out of there just so it's got a nice thread. Better be able to tighten that down. Grab the one on the other side. And these, uh, these paper gaskets, they are fragile, so it's important that we are being careful with them so we don't break the new one. That poke through, just get that crud out of there. there we go. Just like that. I'm going to use my Allen wrench just to tighten these in a little bit more. And that is one nice feature with the winds, though, that these just have to be loose. And we can. that and this one you'll see it has a rear little lip so we want to get that upper lip right in there we want to make sure that the washers are on top Just like that and just like that there you go we double check it yep on the bottom side good we're right in place we'll go ahead and lock these down these and just snug nice and snug that's all
There we go, nice and snug. Everything's nice and secure there with the motor. Then we're gonna go ahead and just uh, hook that electrical back up. Like we mentioned earlier, we had the light pink right here going right to the low limit switch. And then we have the red going to the circuit block down below here, third over on the vertical. Get that on there nice and tight. I am going to grab a couple zip ties, zip tie this all back up nice together so everything is nice and taut. Uh, but essentially, uh, that is it as we look at pulling out a convection blower, doing some cleaning, putting that back in the stove. So if you have any specific questions, uh, comments, anything particular about your model, just leave us a comment in the video below. We're always happy to help. We're always here. Uh, make sure that you're staying warm over there. So thanks again for joining us for another session of Pellet Tech 101, and we will see you soon.